OK, working with Azure Functions. In this demo, we're going to show you how you can create an Azure Function uh, using Visual Studio Code. Now, Azure Functions is available in many languages, but the three that we're going to focus on today are Python, C Sharp, and JavaScript. Now, as I said, uh, Azure Functions can be deployed via Visual Studio Code. Uh, but they can also be deployed on the command line, in a DevOps pipeline, uh, in the portal, or using templates. Uh, there's just a, a ton of different ways to do it, but I like using Visual Studio Code. And I use these two extensions, Azure Tools and Azure Functions, because they uh, integrate very nicely with the, the, the interface within Visual Studio Code. Now, let's pull up the command palette with Shift, Control, P, and I can create a new project. Um, here, I'm going to navigate over to my repos, go to my Python folder, and create a whole new folder called demo. Uh, I think we're at five today. OK, so demo five. And I'm going to select this as my folder where Visual Studio is going to uh, now ask me what language. So I'm going to use Python. I'm going to select the interpreter that it found. I'm going to do HTTP triggered function with anonymous binding. And I'm going to uh, do that in the current window. So what Visual Studio is doing at this point is it's creating some skeleton code for me to deploy. And the reason I picked anonymous was because I don't really, uh, I just want to show you how to deploy it. Uh, you can lock these functions down. You can integrate them with AD, and you can give them different um, uh, uh, dif different authentication requirements for whoever's going to be using the, uh, the function. So once the, the skeleton comes up, all you basically need to do is navigate into the HTTP 1 trigger. Uh, remember, we created a trigger, an HTTP trigger. Here, there are two func uh, two files, init and function. Init is actually the logic that will be get executed once the function is triggered. Um, think of this as your hello world. And uh, functions.json is where you specify the bindings. Now, there's a demo later on that shows you how to do the bindings. But in this case, uh, the only thing that you really need to think about is that we're doing we're responding to get and post. OK, so that's that's as simple as that. I'll be able to deploy by going over to uh, the Azure tools and actually selecting deploy Azure function. But for now, let's just focus on um, the other languages. So that was Python. Let's uh, switch and we'll do another one. We'll do this one in C sharp. So as before, uh, I'm going to switch over to the command palette, sh shift control P, new project. Uh, I'm going to select where I would like that stored, C sharp, and I'm going to make a new folder. Let's call this demo five. I'll create the folder, select it. I'm going to select C sharp as my language. Uh, my runtime environment is .NET 6, HTTP trigger. These are all the same um, questions that I had for Python. Now, uh, looks like C Sharp um, creates a little bit faster, but at, at the end of the day, it's all going to be the same thing. Um, in here, the only difference between C Sharp and Python is that the bindings are integrated into the function declaration for run. So here I'm saying that this is an anonymous call. It responds to get and post, uh, and there are no routes. So it's as simple as that. Let's take a look at um, uh, JavaScript now. So same as before, shift control P, uh, create a new project. And I'm going to go to the repo. I'm going to select my JavaScript folder. I'm going to create a new folder. Demo. Six. Select it. I'm going to select JavaScript. Same thing as before, the trigger, the name of the trigger, anonymous, the current window that I want to work in. And it's ready to go. Uh, similar to Python, I get two function, two files, JSON file, which, uh, which allows me to define my bindings, and index.js. That concludes our uh, demo. Thank you.